You know, some time ago, I did a release on the podcast and I was pretty adamant. And I was adamant because I saw the sign. I opened up my eyes and saw the sign. You know, I, it's like the song, right? Ace of Base, 1993. But, you know, I said straight up that until, and for those that don't realize, and I know there's a lot of new people listening to the show and possibly some that don't subscribe to our podcast at CryptoTalkRadio.net, which I strongly recommend. But we've done coverage for Satama since October. Actually, we've been watching Satama since October. And we watched from a distance, Bette Midler, I forget what year, I remember singing it in 1995, so it had to be before that. But We've been watching it. We've been having eyes from a distance to see. It's almost like the train wreck analogy, right? You know, it's a train crash and you you, you can't take your eyes off it because it just seems like it derails. It's going to happen. Or on the freeway, you see a car that's kind of swerving and you know something's about to happen and you kind of, you can't take your eyes off it. You don't know what's going to happen. You suspect that it's not going to turn out good. And so you can't take your eyes off this wreck that's about to happen. That's always been Satama from the moment that we started watching it. And I'm going to do what I did for Seifu, which sounds like isn't really Seifu, but I'm going to do what I did there because I already know that there are going to be naysayers because unfortunately Satama built a cult. I don't know why it decided to build a cult, but it built a cult. And after it built a cult, this cult seems to have, I actually saw a person on social media who essentially told, in this case believes, basically said he doesn't really want to hear anything that is contradictory to what he believes. Folks, if you don't want to hear the truth, I understand. The Matrix came out. It basically confirmed that there are people that just want to be blind, deaf, dumb, and oblivious to the truth that they don't want to hear that the world is fake or that it's manufactured, probably a better said. I understand there's people that don't want to hear the truth because you're so strongly in belief. And I support your strong belief. I support your right to be so fervently behind this project. You want to believe because here's the truth. That's usually how cults work. You have a cult leader of some kind like that uh, Nixon or whatever it is with that girl from whatever, uh, Smallville. You want to believe so bad. You want to believe this guy. He's telling you everything that's, that sounds good to you, and you want to believe it because someday you know it's going to go and make you a millionaire or a billionaire, and you're tired of working for a living, and you feel like this is the way to get there. And for whatever reason, some of you, not all of you, but for whatever reason, you can't see a light at the end of the tunnel for any other cryptocurrency. You can't see that Bitcoin's going to make you rich. You can't see that Paratoken could make you rich. You don't see that any of these other ones, Floki, Kishu, Yushi, any of these others can make you rich. And so Satama sold you. It sold you on a bill of goods. What is selling you on a bill of goods? Selling you on a bill of goods means you were supposed to get a product, something delivered, and instead, you got the bill of goods, which basically is a paper that says you're going to get some product. That's selling a bill of goods. Does that sound familiar? It should sound familiar because from November, let's be clear here, especially if you're a new investor, go back and I will share the links even. Way back in November, there was a buildup to a Vegas event where they were going to allegedly release Cytomask. And they had screenshots and they had all this information the Vegas event gets closer and closer and they're advertising in Times Square and in Las Vegas, which is where I happen to be near, that you're going to be able to download this Cytomask on November 13th at this Vegas event. I want to spoil you when I say that nobody was able to download that tool on the Vegas event because it wasn't done. Now, let's do some basic math. November, December, January, February, soon to be March. So now... As time is passing from November 13th, you have Jake Gain out there and he doesn't know what he's doing to film the event. And he does it as a favor because your cult leader is too proud to actually ask people who know what they're doing because he doesn't know what he's doing in Vegas. And he doesn't understand some of the rules that were in place, especially during the pandemic. He's too proud to actually ask people that know what they're doing. He's too proud to actually ask people who are local who could have told him well in advance what not to do. 
And for whatever reason, probably him, somebody dropped the ball and refused to remove the images that would have told people to download the mask because you they knew you weren't going to be able to do it. Now, of course, there was a bunch of churn with the Certic audit initially. And apparently what I'm told is that Certic was scrambling at the last minute as well. The point is, though, up to the very, I'd say up to hours before the event, there was an opportunity to yank those images down. You simply tell the rotator, hey, I need to swap the image out. We need to get this done. And they'll accommodate because they know things change. So that didn't happen. Somebody dropped the ball, probably your cult leader. Regardless, they say, you know, we got to go ahead with the event. We booked it. And that's true. They booked it. They wasted money on it. They wasted money on the Lambo they gave away to somebody, which is your money, by the way. And then there was a bunch of lies spread around social media recently saying that there never was a marketing wallet. And then somebody had to chime in and say, no, they said that there's a, quote, donation wallet. If you go back in our archives, I called out a concern about this asking for donations. That's where that comes from. They were asking for donations well way back in that November event. So there always was a wallet for donations. If you, this is news to you, this goes back to the point about the cult leader and being sold a bill of goods because, yes, there was a donation wallet. Yes, they were asking for donations, which I didn't agree with that time. So then they take all this money and they do this event and it's a, and I had somebody chime back and say, you know, we celebrated our holder counts and everything else. At some point, I think it's important people start to understand. There's a, when you, let's take Tim Cook, formerly Steve Jobs. If they wanted to announce the next iPad or the next iPhone or the next MacBook, they'll show you images of it. They might even have a model there, but usually if it's the, the computer, they don't. But they may have some model there. Very rarely is it available for buy same day. And generally speaking, their images will tell you a future date as to when it's available for you because they're not trying to overpromise when it's going to be available. Microsoft is the same way. Why? Because that's what you're supposed to do. Now, during the time, November, a bunch of chatter was spinning around saying that they plan to have this act like a keynote. And if you don't know what a keynote is, that's what Apple calls their events are keynotes because the product they use to create the slides in Apple is called keynote. So this was chatted that yes, the Satama release is going to be a very professional keynote like presentation. We're going to produce the product and then they're going to talk about the features and everything going to do. That's not what you got. You got a drunken stupor, including a bunch of people that had nothing to do with the project and a bunch of celebrities. I'm told that Floyd Mayweather stopped by to have a couple of drinks. Oh, he doesn't drink, but you know what I'm saying? And Jake is allegedly, I didn't see his video because I didn't watch it, but allegedly he's begging people for money to get drinks, even though he's banking, bankrolling money. So he's, that's, that's called grifting for those who don't know. So now you take this that's presented as a professional keynote presentation and it turns into a drunken stupor where they give somebody a Lambo. I saw that images. They promoted that one. Yeah, you got a Lambo. That's your money, by the way. So now you don't get the product you were told you were going to get. And that's what I think people are ignoring. You didn't get what you were told you were going to get. Instead, you got sold a bill of goods, which is it's coming. That's a bill of goods. You didn't get the product. The product, the release, the launch was around Cytomask in November. We then later learned Certic is doing their thing. Okay. If you go back to my previous coverage, and again, CryptoTalkRadio.net, because a lot of this will not be on YouTube. Well, I think I've copied most of it, but some of it's not there. I said, chances are this is going to be a little bit delayed. My guess is they'll have the Certic audit done by Christmas or mid-December, but Christmas let the latest. They rushed it. They got it done by Christmas. People are celebrating. You still don't have a, this side of mask. January rolls around. Something gets released. Now, here's the problem. There were people celebrating the fact that it came out, despite the fact nobody could really use it because it was buggy. And then they lied and they they confirmed we're lying about this DDoS attack and all this other stuff happening when the truth is it wasn't done. And then I exposed that, hey, this is tied to testnet. That's a problem. They came back and said, we did that on purpose, deep, deep, deep. Nobody who has any competence in software development would purposely code it to testnet and then release it to production. That doesn't make any sense. That means it's a lie. Either they didn't know that it was testnet and I caught them on their, on their BS or two, they did test net, but they didn't mean to release it. And they just said, screw it. Since it's out, we might as well just go with it. That's not the way you do software development. So we already knew, and Teddy Ganja called out, we already knew we're dealing with people that don't know what they're doing with software development. And they don't understand software development lifecycle. And I challenge you to go ahead and Google software development lifecycle because it will tell you exactly what you're supposed to do. In any event, we go through all these iterations, versions, right? 1.0, 1.1, and 1.2, and 1.3, none of which work. 
And then you got inconsistency in who can use it and who can't, and then people who claim to be able to use it, and they use screenshots despite the fact that they block screenshot functions. So we know that they just basically copy the screenshots from the site and put them up there and claim that it's working because, again, you want to believe the cult leader so bad, you are so fixated that he's telling you the truth that you're doing anything to try to defend it. And I know why you're doing it, because you want to protect your bag. You're concerned about the people selling. You're concerned about the people dumping. When I go on social media... And I point out that, hey, there's these whales and they're dumping a lot, unreasonable amounts. Your concern shouldn't really even be that they dumped. Your concern should be that there were that many whales still left in the project. And nobody seems to be talking about that. But think about it. When you got to November 13th, when you're ramping up to that whole event and the hype's there and it, it jumps, that's where its all-time high came from is just prior to November 13th, you can go back to the graph. That's when it hit the all-time high. That's when it hit all unreasonable levels of growth. Guess what? The vast majority of those were those same whales buying into the project. And then over time, whales start to dump the project. Not all of them, but the whales that were dumping are the vast majority of the reason for such significant drop from all time high. Your concern shouldn't be that they dumped. Your concern should be that there's so many whales in the project. We see so many other projects that purposely put in mechanics to prevent that from happening. Satama never had such a thing. Clearly, when you have people dumping 400 ETH, Able to dump 400 ETH, think about it. You probably have even more whales left in. We know the devs are whales still in the project. That means you still got a long way to go, brothers and sisters. I'm trying to tell you, and multiple have tried to tell you. Ultimately, at the end of the day, the project didn't deliver what they said they were going to do. As a result, people started dumping. Some of those will come back because we saw that some of them were influencing the price, purposely trying to drive it down to buy off dips. We saw that. However, what we're seeing now is there's less of that. The volume is down. When the volume is down, that means people are not exploiting it. They're just taking their money and going elsewhere. And we can trace it. Blockchain's public. You can see that they're going to other projects that just happen to have the current hype. But the vast majority are just basically creating pump and dump scenarios. They're buying into the thing to spike the price, and then they dump it after they make the profit and go to the next one. That's what's happening. So all of the cryptos are being subject to churn. I saw Classy Crypto's video. I saw what he said. In some cases, I agree with him in the, in the sense that, yes, everybody's churning cryptocurrency. That's really the truth of what's happening. That's part of the symptom of Satama. But I need to call out a couple things here for folks. Number one, you don't have a product. You don't have a product. You have a beta. It's okay to have a beta as long as you call it a beta and as long as you properly classify it as not a production-ready product because it's not production-ready. Your cult leader is not going to do that because he's trying to save face. You're not going to call them out because you're trying to preserve your bag. Guess what? That's doing a disservice to yourself, and it's doing a disservice to the so-called community. This is where I want to transition into my formal response to Classy Crypto because he seems like a very nice guy. I saw his story. He said he had challenges in the past in expressing himself, and he wanted to have that platform, and he wanted to help other people. And I applaud him, Hercules, Hercules, for speaking out and having that conversation here are some problems I have with your messaging because I don't think you're giving everybody the messaging they need to hear in some cases, not all. First of all, you're advocating community. I advocate community. But in one point, you said it's not about cult. There is a cult in Satama. I would argue the vast majority of them are part of the cult. They like being part of the cult. They think it's community and it's not community because a cult does not properly recognize the pros and the cons. If you don't recognize the cons, you can't hold people accountable. And by cons, I mean the negatives as well as con men. See what I did there? I think it's important that your community calls out both sides. This is why certain people that are YouTubers and influencers, certain, not all, certain of them have done a stellar job over time giving both sides. When things look like they're looking good, they'll celebrate and say they're looking good, but we need to keep doing this and keep it strong. They're giving you that centralized feedback to try to encourage you to keep doing what we've been doing. However, they also hold accountable when there's these cons coming into place, again, both negatives and con men who have a risk to that momentum and things are not so good and they'll call them out properly and say, no, this is a problem. We need to fix this. Those influencers that call out both sides, those are the ones, whoever's listening to this, whether it's Classy Crypto himself or anybody else, those are the ones you should be listening to, are the ones who will tell you the pros and tell you the cons, and you, 
as somebody invested in the project or interested in the project should be receptive and welcoming of both pros and cons because that's the only way you can hold people accountable. And until, as I've said on multiple occasions, go back in the archive, until we get to the point of holding the cult leader accountable and until the cult leader denounces the cult and says, no, it's not about me, ladies and gentlemen, it's about the project and we failed you as the people in charge of this project. And oh, by the way, we need to really seriously consider if we change the leadership of this thing because apparently it ain't working because we're not delivering what we promised you. Until we get to that point, you don't have a product. You have promises, broken promises, broken dreams, Drew McIntyre. So I'm not telling you what to do with your investment, that's your choice. Nobody's telling you what to do with your investment. None of the none of them have told you, even the ones that are excessive shills, none of them have told you what to do with your project. You can make your own decisions. What we are saying, I think the message is consistent. If we truly want to get to this message of community, community is good and bad because at the end of the day, you need to hear the pros and the cons of the project so that you can make an informed decision and hold people accountable or it truly won't get any better. And you're going to keep getting let down over and over again, banking on false hopes. Here's the, here's the flip of what I just said. If you're so wealthy, right, that you don't even care if Satama succeeds or fails, I question why you care when somebody tells you things aren't working because you shouldn't care. Who cares that you lost $10,000? I saw some person just say he lost 10,000 bucks. You didn't really lose because you didn't sell, right? Number one. Number two, why do you care? If you have that much money, why do you really care? Uh, Henoch has called out. He lost like 30 something thousand dollars. He cares because he has a project that's guiding why he's doing the investment. Okay, there is a reason. But if you just have money and you're just sitting on money and you lost it, why do you care? You haven't sold it yet, so shrug it off. But you should still be embracing of this negative feedback that you're getting because it's important you start seeing the truth. It doesn't mean you necessarily sell, but it does mean that you hopefully start holding the cult leader accountable and start working towards building the community that I think should be there, which is one that's willing, collectively willing, to hold this guy accountable for his failures. He, we can talk about the AMAs all we see. I have dialed into a few of the AMAs that he's done. I dialed into the one that he did on you know, Crypto Realist and Sandstorm and some of the ones that weren't really AMAs and that inspired my past video, which is on YouTube, about false AMAs. And I've seen him do it. The problem is nobody has really truly done an AMA to the degree that I think should be done with the exception of crypto realist. He came the closest. I'm talking about get him to acknowledge that he effed up. He's not going to do that because he's the cult leader. And until the cult tells him it's time for you to acknowledge your failures and maybe we need to change the leadership here. Because here's the facts. If this were any other business outside of the crypto bubble, that's exactly what would happen. You'd have people out the door. The investor pool would say, he's got to go. He's got to go because he's taking the project. Haven't you noticed that every time Russ does anything public where he speaks, the price seems to suffer? Do you know why that is? It should be obvious why that is because people don't believe him. They don't trust him. He comes across as a shyster because he doesn't really answer questions. And he doesn't own up to his almost cussed F-ups. He doesn't own it. And then there are people in the cult who say, why does that matter? Deep, deep, deep. Because accountability is the number one thing that matters when you're trying to run a business. And by the way, he chose to form an LLC around the damn thing. So since he chose to do that, guess what? I'm going to hold you accountable as if it's a business because it is a business and you made that choice. Now you can dissolve the business all you care to. I think it might help the project. But as long as you are running a business or excuse me, chief operating officer in a partnership in charge and in head of the business, I'm going to hold you accountable as if you run the business. And if it were a business outside the crypto bubble, I'd have the same response and I'd be just as disappointed. But here's the thing. When it's fiat involved, people would be asking for heads to roll. He'd be out of there instantly out of there. We wouldn't tolerate it. We wouldn't tolerate this many lies. In fact, he'd be in prison by now for a lot of stuff he said and has not delivered on folks. If you want to continue with the project, I encourage you do so. I celebrate your support. I celebrate your loyalty. I celebrate the fact that you are so loyal to a project. There are many that are similar, Kishu and Floki and so on, that just have organic, loyal communities. But even SHIB had a dump of holders because they weren't, they made a bad decision with that Shibarium and using the wrong token to support the, the, the DAO. So even they had the same issue when, and that's what I want to see personally, more tokens held accountable. When you make bad decisions, 
I want to see that the investors speak with their wallets. That's what I'd like to see. Whatever that means to you. If you speak with your wallet by saying, I'm going to just buy more because I believe in it, great. But what you shouldn't do is go up there and attack people because they're trying to tell you the truth about what's not working with the project. You should celebrate the fact that you're trying to expose the truth. And at some point, you got to get a reality check. Even if you choose to stay loyal, you still got to embrace the fact and just acknowledge, just like I say with the cult leader, you got to acknowledge, you know what? You're right. He failed us. Yes, he jacked up the launch. Yes, they are not getting the mask out. Yes, they keep making false promises. Yes, the dates are never correct. Yes, every time he speaks, the price tanks. Yes, he is causing harm to my investment. You have to have that same acknowledgement. You've got to accept the truth because you're flying blind. You're plugged into the matrix and we're trying to help you. We're trying to free you and free your mind because that's just going to make you stronger as a crypto investor. That's not to tell you whether to buy or not buy or sell or not sell. It's to at least get you to acknowledge you're being sold a bill of goods. And as long as you're okay buying bills of goods, you don't really have the right to complain when you, quote, lose money because you're choosing to lose money because you're giving money to somebody who's coming across like a grifter. At least acknowledge that. At least accept and say, I know I'm being taken by a grifter and I'm okay being taken by a grifter. It's just throw away money. We then respect you more because at least your eyes are open to the truth instead of what we are seeing, which is people who just don't even want to hear the truth. And they just believe every lie that is being transmitted simply because we're seeing broken, fragmented, incremental progress from a team that's incompetent. Like there's nothing wrong with the time of the code. There's nothing wrong with the time of the project. Everything is about the people. The devs behind the project don't know what they're doing. They're in over their heads. Too much lofty promises, too much lofty vision, and not enough actual completed work that we can say this project's done before we go on to the next one. The more you bite off, this is IT 101, the more you bite off, the more you look foolish, and that's what we're seeing. We all, I say, I would say, we all agree that at some point in the future, Satama is likely to be a good thing. I'll tell you, and this is me, I don't speak for them, I'll tell you that greatness ain't going to come with that cult leader at the head. It'll come with him out of the way. If he was out of the way, I believe firmly we'd already been back at all-time high. That's why I slightly contrast with Classy. I think that the all-time high is actually achievable, but not as long as cult leaders in front of it because he's the reason that people don't have any confidence in it. Him, not the code, not even Max, not Elon, none of the rest of them. They've made errors, but the buck stops with him because he's the mouth of the South. He's the one up there talking and making false promises, yes, he's probably getting fed the info from somebody else who's just not doing him right, but you got to think about it. At what point do you say, you know what, dude or lady, whoever's feeding him BS, you've given me bad information. It's made me look bad. You're out of the, You're out of here. You're gone. At what point do you stop when you have a pattern of misrepresentation and a pattern of failure where you start making changes in the leadership structure, where you start getting people out of there because they're lying to you? That, so that goes to competence. If he's not competent enough to be that figurehead, he shouldn't be the figurehead. So I, that's the one piece I'll contrast classy is it's yes, there's a cult. I, I, the vast majority are cult. They act like a cult. They're, they're welcoming the cult description. They like it in rust. We trust you hear it all the time until that breaks. And that's only going to break when you get rid of the cult leader. I think Satan is never going to get to that point. If you got rid of him, I believe this. I'll predict it. If you got rid of him and the cult breaks, so Thomas should easily get back to its all-time high. Because here's the thing, there's no reason it shouldn't. Because the, solid, the code is sound. It's solid code. It's a solid project generically. Take bite-sized chunks of projects. Take it part by part and don't move on to a new initiative until you finish one. Once you finish one to the satisfaction of 90% or greater of the investors, then you move on to a new one. You don't just spin up a whole bunch of things because you're going to be biting off more than you could chew. That's what I feel. I don't personally care if you disagree with me. That's not the point of this. The point of this is I wanted to make a statement because I wanted to at least, I haven't spoken about it a long time on purpose because I knew people wouldn't believe me if I had done regular coverage and I kept telling you the same things you don't want to hear. I already knew that things were going to succeed. I already knew Cytomass was going to be a catastrophic failure at this point because I did reviews of the tool and told you it wasn't done and it's half-baked. You can go back and listen to that coverage. 
I told you when it first launched in January, this isn't going to work out and I don't recommend it because I see that they're making very bad design decisions. They don't know what the heck they're doing. So I purposely stopped talking about it. Side of mask I refer to because it wasn't worth it because you wouldn't believe me. Now I'll go ahead and do this update because we're in March and I'm hopeful. I'm optimistic that the vast majority of you will not treat it as quote FUD because FUD refers to information that's not true. There's no FUD here. I'm telling you what you don't want to hear, but you need to hear it because it's important for you to hold people accountable. That means hold the cult leader accountable. That means getting to the point of community that, that Classy is wanting to see. And to do that, you got to break the cult. That means it's incumbent on each and every one of you to denounce that cult mentality. Whenever you see Russ, we trust crap. You should denounce that. That should not be in place. You've lost sight of what matters. It's the project, not the man. So until you get that through your heads, those that are still in the cult, blind, deaf, dumb, and stupid, you're never going to be a true community. And because you're not a true community, you're always going to be disappointed when your leader fails you.